The government's fracking czar has resigned just six months into her post. Natasha Engel says the government's decision to force the industry to stop fracking every time there's a micro tremor amounts to a ban on the process. She believes fracking would bring both environmental and economic benefits. One of the things that they can do immediately is to stop importing um, gas from foreign countries as far away as Qatar um, and all the carbon emissions that we have by um, uh, liquefying it, bringing it over a tanker halfway across the globe and then uh, regasifying it, putting it into the network here and getting it out instead out from underneath our feet in uh, in Lancashire, in Yorkshire, in Derbyshire, in Nottinghamshire, where people are crying out for jobs. So we're meeting climate change targets, carbon and carbon reduction targets, and we're getting some some really decent jobs in parts of the country that really need them. Let's go live to our North of England correspondent Tom Parmenter, who's in Blackpool for us this afternoon. Natasha Engel says that fracking is a good thing for the country. Environmentalists disagree, Tom. Yeah, this site has had protesters outside for the last two and a half years as they've gone through the process of trying to establish whether or not it is a viable uh, prospect. They, quite earlier this year, said that it definitely is, but that those limits on the size of the earth tremors that are permitted in associated with this industry uh, are just too, in the view of Quadrilla, the drilling firm here, just too conservative. And Natasha Engel has outlined quite uh, strongly that she sees this as a viable industry that could be valuable, delivering jobs, delivering energy, security to the UK. But uh, many of the protesters who have been here for some 843 days now see this as a bit of a victory in their long campaign to try and get this site closed down completely. Let's bring in one of them. Uh, Tina, uh, explain to me your thoughts on Natasha Engel standing down and deciding that she can't see a viable future for this, so she can't take her role any further. I think as much as we're relieved to see another one step away from this industry, her reasoning is entirely absurd. I'd like to think that she'd have come to this conclusion based on the evidence we presented to her only recently, um, showing that this industry is dangerous and very bad for any community, as proved in America and Australia and other places where it's taken place. As for energy security, if we gave even half of the subsidies we give this industry to the renewable sector and stopped trying to close it down, we'd be miles ahead. We would, we would be soaring with um, decent renewable energy that would provide jobs that would last for our children for the future. This is short term, short gain, and the only people who get anything out of this are those who seek to profit from it. Your group has sat down with Natasha Engel. You yes. had tea and cake, you yes. were telling me. Very civilised affair. Yeah. What do you make of the characterisation that she's put forward of the power that the environmental lobby protesters like yourselves have? I'm grateful that there's an assumption of power. Uh, we've certainly not felt that for the eight years we've been tackling you know, fracking in the UK. However, it has been stalled for all that time. So clearly we have had an impact as people in our communities, at different communities throughout the country. So has the government stopped because it listened to the people? I don't believe so. I believe the government is stopping because the facts are too big to ignore and too honest to ignore. There are 1,600 reports on fracking that will tell you it's a bad idea. The government chooses to read the IOD report and other reports that were paid for for favourable uh, representation of this industry. And just finally, what is your assessment of this particular site now? Because we know that this is one that Cordrilla would like to develop if those limits were lifted. But the team that you have down here, 24-7, tell us that there's very little activity and a lot of equipment has been taken away. What, what point are we at here in Blackpool? Well, we stopped fracking at the end of October because they had had 57 seismic events and they said that the traffic light system stopping them at 0.5 uh, was way too low. Uh, the fact that Quadrilla had actually been consulted on that and was part of the agreement to the traffic light system, um, it makes that absurd. And also, Francis Egan on the eve of fracking said, but there won't be any earthquakes anyway. So how many lies and, and you know, misleading information will we put up with before we say that this industry is wrong for any community? Traffic light system, um, they said that they could possibly reassess in the future after they had enough facts and figures, but they've fracked less than 5% of what they intended to frack here on well one. They've not started on well two. Their license is up in November. They haven't applied to frack wells three and four. The place is like a, the Mary Celeste and um, there's two or three security guards about. We still come every day and we still monitor 24 hours, but I think that uh, I'm optimistic, cautiously optimistic.
Okay, Tina Rothery from Frack Free Lancashire. Thanks for joining us live on Sky News. And we wait to see whether or not Natasha Engel will be replaced, uh, whether there will be a new fracking czar brought in. But certainly this is very much an industry at a crossroads and a lot of debate as to whether or not those limits can be safely lifted to allow that seismic activity. Uh, a lot of experts say that that is entirely reasonable to do that. Others, as you heard from Tina there, say it is completely unacceptable. There is still a great deal of debate around the fracking future for the UK. Tom in Blackpool, thank you.